Well, welcome to the Zealous Podcast. I'm your host, Rocky Snyder. This week, we're talking all about vestibular training and how it applies to a whole bunch of athletes and non-athletes alike. Sheila Theron is the owner of Vestibular Training Services, and she's got a unique tool that began with figure skating, but now she's using it for the military, for people in special populations, the NFL, the NHL, and a whole bunch of others. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Rocky underscore Snyder and click subscribe and enjoy this conversation. Well, Sheila, I can't thank you enough for coming on. You know, we had a wonderful conversation last week where, or the week before where we were just talking about the work that you're doing with vestibular training. I'm so happy you reached out to me uh, and let's just get it going. How did you get into vestibular training? Hi, it's so nice to be here. Thanks for having me. So it's it's a it's not a long story. I've been coaching forever. I've been coaching for over 30 years. And my athletes could do things that other athletes couldn't as we looked at them compared to other sports. So I come from the figure skating world. And if you look past the dresses and the sequins and the music and you just look at that athlete, they're phenomenal. And their balance is <laughs> crazy what they can be able to balance and move and they can spin like crazy and come out and not be dizzy. So we started doing a lot of training with harnesses and spinners about almost three decades ago. So like about 28 years ago. So I, I owned a harness company. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's the harness. And then there's probably a dog and there's, you know, the spinner. And, um, and we just started noticing our athletes could do more. And so I also worked with another group called Grassroots to Champions, and I was the executive director. And it was basically 30 Olympic coaches um, that would do seminars all over the world together. And we had some downtime. So we would sit and talk about like, like, how come this kid can do it and this kid can't? How come this kid's rising and this kid's struggling on the same coaching staff, same training tools, same everything? How come this kid's rising and this one isn't? And these are the questions as coaches, I think we ask constantly, like, like why does this one succeed and this one struggle? And, and what can we do to get them all to rise? And really, when we look at it beyond physical training, it's that neuro training that, you know, there are kids that did a lot of neuro training and boy, they were, they were different athletes compared to our, our, our good athletes but not our great athletes. And those great athletes did neuro training. And that's, that's how we got here and really looked at that vestibular system. And what that really is, is how your eyes and ears process back into your brain. It's your master system of information coming in. And it's tied to like 20 different things, but the three big ones are all the things we need in sports and living. The first one is, of course, balance. Oh my gosh, if you can improve someone's balance, you made them a better athlete. You made them safer. You made your grandma not fall. You know, so, so like balance is number one. Number two is cognitive processing. So once again, if I can speed up your brain, you're a better athlete, but you're also a better driver. <laughs> it's all the little pieces. And then the third thing that's really connected to vestibular is non-spatial disorientation. And that's what my athletes can really show. Um, and that's the, these are the decision-making pieces of, of really knowing what you should be looking at and what you need to be not looking at and not distracted by. So it, it, it's working with the war fighters, working with the NFL, it's working with the NHL, it's working with aging people. It's working with children with autism. All of these pieces are the expansion of our company. Well, definitely, I can see where it could expand out to so many different populations, obviously not like not solely restricted to athletes, as you just mentioned. I mean, you are in Minnesota, which is the land of lakes, but in the wintertime, it's the land of frozen ponds. So <laughs> hockey, figure skating, I mean, you are in the mecca of it. So it it's a. Uh, it's no surprise uh, after all the years that you've been doing coaching, you, you're speaking to Olympic coaches. So, but I, have you been to many Olympics? Have you trained many Olympians? I can only imagine that you have, but I, I don't have your background. So I, I work with the whole gamut within the sport. I work with everything from three-year-olds 
<laughs> Some kid bit me a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope worked, he was three. I worked the trenches. You know, like I've worked the trenches of coaching, you know, like I, um, I've worked that group, but I've worked all the way through Olympians, but how we figured out in figure skating, I've worked with almost a vast majority of the Olympians at some point somewhere in their career, but I never head coached them. And in figure skating, the only person that gets that Olympic coach status is the head coach. So none of the peripheral coaches, none of the assistant coaches, nobody else gets that designation, but the one head coach mm. so in figure skating we have very few olympic coaches because it's just it's only the head coach that got credit so, Understood. so no, i've never never ever have i head coached an olympic figure skater yet i've worked with so many at so many points in their career and a majority of them use all my training tools you know throughout their career perfect okay so for the listening audience we are diving into vestibular training. And if you're unfamiliar with the vestibular system, there are chambers within the inner, inner ear, uh, very much shaped like vestibules that you would find in an old church, hence the name vestibular system. And these are three-dimensional chambers shaped and positioned in such a way similar to the navigational system in an airplane where they will have pitch, roll, and yaw. In the world of movement, we call those planes of motion, sagittal, frontal, and transverse. But they help to, like Sheila was saying, create spatial awareness. Where am I? Essentially, which way is up? And where am I going? Where am I positioned? And there's other areas within the vestibular system that tell us about acceleration or deceleration, as well as uh, when you're in an elevator, when you're going up and down. So you're harnessing a lot of that, um, that sensory perception, sensory reception, interpretation, and then what the brain does with it. And this is not, by the way, not to get too wordy here, but this is not something that's new. I mean, the whirling dervishes in the Middle East have been doing it for millennium. The, the Tibetan monks have a fountain of youth program which is all about spinning. And when we look at kids, you mentioned the three-year-old. I mean, one of my most favorite playground pieces of equipment that you are hard to find these days are the, the lazy Susie that you sit on the bars and you roll around. And then it, it's no wonder that kids that are learning how to create balance and awareness in their world as they're toddling, love spinning around. We either grab them by their arms and spin them in circles and make the airplane, or you just see them out in the grass spinning, spinning, spinning. Somewhere along the way, Sheila, I know we became adults and we thought we were wiser and not having child play in our world anymore, but that was the biggest mistake. Would you agree? Absolutely. And the whole concept of sit still, don't move. Hold oh. your head still wait a minute, look at a screen all day long. Okay, oh. so now the head stops moving, the child stops moving, and <laughs> it all starts going downhill. Yeah, yeah, because as humans, we're meant to move and to move that head. And that, that's something that children absolutely have to do. And now, of course, the whole theme is sit still, don't move, just look at the teacher, look at the, look at the screen. And it, it's, it's affecting us in so many ways. So your major, uh, I'll say product or, or piece of equipment, that, that's your go-to anchor is the harness with what I would, uh, with a platform, a circular platform that's motorized, that is controlled by you, that can have somebody standing on it and they can rotate around the circle at varying speeds. And then with the harness, it's not only safety, but you actually have a block and tackle system for only the listening audience, you're, you'll be seeing this if you're, you switch over to the YouTube and, and watch the videos, but you pull people off the platform so that they're in midair and they're spinning, doing these figure skating actions and spin, spin, spin. I mean, what, how did you develop that, first of all? And then what are the effects that you've seen? So it... I it, it really looks like figure skating. When you look at it, it just looks like figure. How would you teach someone to rotate in the air with their feet crossed and their hands crossed and balance all of that, you know, without falling over or breaking the axis in midair? So it, it for sure came from figure skating. 
But when we realized all the other things it could do, that's that's the exciting part. And to apply it to other sports and and to apply it to post concussion work and to apply it to autism, like all of these pieces. Are, are the exciting part to it, but it really applies to everyone. I mean, it looks figure skating, but it works for everybody with a brain. Well, yeah. And so that's the majority of the listening audience, at least I'll say. No, <laughs> uh, I got to say it, it all comes back to the brain. The brain is the governing body of our existence. And we can look at a whole bunch of different other systems, but it's all regulated or governed by the central nervous system, the brain and, and spinal cord and so on. So it, it would make sense that if we can start to do some brain training that requires physical movements, I mean, how amazing would that be? So what are some of the outcomes that you have seen? Obviously with figure skating, yes, they're, they're going to be more familiarized. They'll be coming much more natural and, and relaxed in this spinning action, but what about outside of figure skating? So I recently worked with some local police and SWAT teams here in Minnesota. And the, the game was they went and shot at the range first. So basic shooting skills and they got scored. And then they came and worked with me and they did my balance mat. So we checked their balance, 10 seconds, eyes open, 10 seconds, eyes closed. Then did the harness and spinner for five minutes. So that's, it, it only takes five minutes. And then from there, went back to the balance mat, rechecked their balance, the 10 second size open, 10 second size closed, and they all improved their balance and their, their processing speed, like they, their reactionary time within their feet, all of it improved. So everyone already won before they left the building, okay? But then they went back to the gun range, retested, and so far, 100% of the, the officers I've worked with have significantly improved their shooting scores. So, wow. so once again, we're just talking about applying what, what the sports world, you know, like, like outside the sports world, applying those improved vestibular skills and all of them shot better. But they also talk about they slept better that night. You know, for the next three nights, they really, really slept better. They felt better. They they felt like they had spidey senses, you know, like like, like Spider Man senses. They they were just more alert because I cranked on that vestibular, and those were the outcomes. Is is that I I sped them up. I sped up their brain. So the results last about three days, you know. So most people work with me two or three times a week. Although my post concussion people work with me six or seven days a week because. They feel like they've got nowhere to go, but up. <laughs> but, yeah. And, but then from there, they, at the six to eight week mark, it really sticks. Like I can't get you dizzy anymore. So, you know, so the mixed martial arts guys come to me wanting to get dizzy under the concept of trying to simulate getting punched in the face, the disorientation of it and having to fight their way out of the dizzy. But at the six week mark, I can't make them dizzy anymore. I, I trained it out of them. And and have they noted in their situation that uh, when getting impacted by a fist or something, how that has changed? <laughs> Fight their way out of it a lot easier now. And it's not, it's not that as disorienting as it used to be. And I just recently had some pro rodeo guys call me coming to their book in time to come work with me under the same concept. They can't get disoriented on the bull much less than the flip off that they don't get disoriented when they hit the ground so they can pop back up and, and be alert and not be disoriented, you know, before the bull steps on them and crushes them. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, but when they called me, I'm like, oh, this makes total sense. <laughs> yeah, I should be working with you, you know? So it's fun to see the whole group expand. Yeah, now I imagine there is, a, I know that there is varying degrees of, let's say, RPMs, revolutions per minute, in terms of one individual is going to require a faster RPM, higher RPM than somebody else. Let's just take the TBI or, or post-concussion syndrome individuals. Most likely you're going to start them out very slowly and then progress them on, just like any other exercise. But <clears throat> when it comes to, say, 
the figure skaters, you're gonna start them most likely at a much higher level because they're accustomed to it and then advance on. Am I on the right track with that? And do you have a certain gauge in which you are going to insert people based on uh, maybe the balance map you spoke of? So, okay, so you're gonna laugh at this. So mm. of course, every sing, it, the, the box comes with a dial from zero to a hundred, okay? And, and, and everyone starts out, um, especially adults at about 17 is, is the most they can handle. And I'm talking, it's a slow roll to the point you look at it in my face and half the videos is like, oh man, this is so boring, you know, like, but that that's, that's as much as they can handle. And I compare it to the spinning teacups at Disney world where you're like, oh yeah, I can't do that kid that I'm going to barf, you know, like I can't handle that. So it steadily, of course, increases up as your skills improve. And that's my favorite point from my post-concussion group is they come to me and they're like, I'm never getting better. My life is crap. I'm not improving. I'm forever stuck at this bottom basement level. And as they work with me, they start to improve. You know, they start at 17, they go to 20, they go to 25, they go to 28. And ultimately you hit your threshold I know this sounds crazy, but when you fall off, you know, like when you start to fall off the platter, it, then that's too fast. It's got to back up till you can maintain the balance on the platter. Of course, my figure skaters, I'm, I'm serious. I have videos of kids doing a hundred on this thing, flying up They're you know, they're spinning. They got a midline cross. And once again, talking about what you talked about earlier, axis, balance, proprioception, it's got horizontal, vertical, yaw, they can move their head. And so they're controlling <laughs> so many systems at the same time. But even NASA was fascinated at my really, 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 really fast videos. Because at the end, the kid comes down and you interview me, you're like, are you dizzy? And they're like, no, I'm not dizzy. And that's, that's the vestibular training that just blows people's mind that, I can get these athletes to turn almost five and a half, six turns per second, and they're not dizzy <laughs> versus some people that take like one turn on the ground and they're like, whoa, you know, yes. <laughs> I'm too fast and I moved my head and I fell over. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, wow, yeah, that's not my athletes. And that's really the application of world-class sports training tools into other sports, but into the general public. Do you remember the TV show, The Biggest Loser? Yes. Yeah. World-class sports training tools to the general public and look at the success. Same thing, world-class sports vestibular training products brought to the general public. And this is, this is why we're leading everything. But that's also why we got a patent. We just got our patent. Mm -hmm. Oh, congratulations. Fantastic. Thank you. We were excited. <laughs> so, so I'm sure there's a few people out there going, oh man, I, I don't, I, I get car sick just driving a, a windy road or I'm always travel sickness. I can't get on a boat and so on. And, and what you may not realize is that and that is caused mainly by what we consider a neural mismatch where the eyes are looking at something that isn't moving while your vestibular system is, your body is moving, so your vestibular system is saying, hey, we're moving, but your eyes are saying, no, we're not. I'm staring at a book or I'm staring inside a, a boat cabin. And, and that neural mismatch starts to aggravate nerves that are right next to another nerve known as the vagus nerve. And, and that goes down through your diaphragm and into your gut, all the way down through your body there. And, and so when that gets irritated, you get travel sickness. But when it comes to what Sheila is doing, the eyes are going around with the vestibular system and there is a match to the information that both the visual system and vestibular system are receiving. So I doubt very much, I, I, in fact, I, I'm probably pretty sure I'm gonna ask this question, does anybody ever get seasickness when doing this with you? So I'm really gentle. Okay, like, and the other part is I'm not cleaning up barf. Okay, like <laughs> I'm not, like I'm not going to do that to you. And and I'm really sensitive. And actually, that's probably the hardest part of training people is how to be sensitive to really watch them. We talk. So while they're on the platter, we're chit chatting. You know, like how you doing? Does this feel too fast? Does this feel too slow? I can speed it up. I can slow it down. But I just start really slow and slowly bring them up. But it's funny, I worked with um, some pro motocross uh, group and by temptation as coaches, we're like, 
<laughs> Dude, we're trying it out fast today. We're starting at 60. And of course the guys were falling off of it, you know, like, but that was almost kind of part of the fun. It was like, yeah, oh, yeah, Tony can't stay on. Let's have him on, see if he can keep up. And I'm like, okay, wait a second, dial it back. So like it's coming up from 20 and being able to control it, you know, every other day, twice a week, three times a week. That's the goal is being able to control it and not vomit, you know, and not because I, I can ruin your day. I, I can spin you till you barf, you know, and that's really not my goal <laughs> because mm -hmm. you're not going to come back to me. So my favorite part is people talk about like, well, that was really fun. I enjoyed it. I feel the difference. And it turned into a game for me because at one point I thought I had to spin you like my figure skaters. I had to like to turn it into a tilt a whirl, you know, for to see success. And to be honest, based on our body tracks balance mat, I don't. And it turned into a game of how little could I do and still see success. And, and, and it's shocking at how little I can do to change your balance. Tell me a little bit about your balance, Matt. You brought that up a couple of times now, and, and I'd love to learn more. Okay. Uh, look, do you want me to just screen share? I'll just show you. Please, please. And if, for the listening audience, if you don't mind, just kind of walk us through it also. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk it through. So, so this balance mat uh, comes from a company called Body Tracks, B O D I T R A K. And as you look at my screen, I'm sorry, I'm just a busy screen person. <laughs> I recently spoke in Australia. So we've got the Sydney Opera House in the background here. It was an amazing day there. So, so, okay. So here's what this balance mat shows me. And actually I'm going to show an individual that has, uh, he was hit by a postal truck on his motorcycle 12 years ago and has a traumatic brain injury. So this is a 12 year old traumatic brain injury. And he is probably 60% paralyzed on his right side. So that as he walks, it drags, you know, and it's, it's an ongoing balance and physical therapy struggle. So he starts out, if you look over here, following my screen here, he starts out with a 0 0.02 head sway. This is 10 seconds, two foot balance, eyes open. So his head's moving just a little bit. He's got 5.71 inches of foot movement in that 10 seconds. So his feet, you know, we all wiggle, but nobody's a brick. You know, so you're talking about where his center of mass is traveling while his feet are on the ground. Exactly. Exactly. Not, you know, center of pressure. So it's it's orbiting or wobbling almost about six inches in different directions. Exactly. In 10 seconds with his eyes open. Got it. Okay. And then on top of it, if you kind of look at this bullseye, it's got like a bullseye and you can see the blue line is his balance moving outward and the red dot is his head. So because he's paralyzed on that right side significantly, of course, his head sits outside the circle. And, and to be honest, that's part of his balance issues is everything sits on this left hip and it's going further and further out over time. So, so we put him on the spinner. And the funny part is he'd seen the kids fly and spin. So he wanted to also. So mm. he'd done two sets. It Really, this is only five minutes. So he'd done two sets of just platter turns, about six or seven turns but now he wanted to fly. So <laughs> here's the fly that he's going to create here. So you can see he's not going very fast. This isn't, this isn't a tilt a whirl. He's, we're really gentle. We lift him up. He crosses his feet in the harness system, but now he's got a midline cross. So he's using both sides of his brain. He's smiling. He's having a great time. He said it was the most fun he'd had in 12 years since the accident. Um, his mom's filming him in the background, but here's the big move. As he starts to come down here, he's going to come down on the paralyzed side and not realize it. So here he steps on that right foot. That's the bad side. Bad, 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 before he finally <laughs> shifts back to the left. And he doesn't realize it to the point where like, did you realize you just came down on your right foot? And he was like, what? Like he didn't even realize he did that. So mm -hmm. So he does two sets of platter turns and just one fly and, and that's it. So ready? Here comes the post test on the body tracks balance mat to, to do, which by the way, um, is an industry standard. Um, a lot of physical therapists use this mat. So ready? Here we go. He goes from the 0 0.02 head sway down to a zero head sway. His head's not moving at all now. He moves from the 5.71 inches of foot movement down to 3.85. 
And you can see in the bullseye, he drops an entire circle. So from three circles of the bullseye down to two circles of the bullseye and starts to come to center. So we were so thrilled with this. We're like, okay, 12 years post major concussion. Um, we were thrilled that there was improvements, like he showed improvements. Uh, but then when we looked at his eyes closed results, pre and post, his pre-test with the 10 seconds eyes closed, he went from a 0 0.12 in head sway to post-test, holy smokes, 0 0.01. Okay, like huge drop in head sway. And he drops from over 10.03 inches of foot movement down to 4.32. And in addition, that's huge. huge improvement. And then with those eyes closed, like, and that's, that's hard balance with your eyes closed with the brain injury. But if you look at the bullseye, you can see in the first one, his pretest, he was zigzagging all over the place to the point I spotted him. I was concerned he was going to fall off the mat just standing there for 10 seconds with his eyes closed. Well, also what you see too is below this is the force time curve. And you can see prior to the vestibular training, how much work he was having to go through in terms of how much force his body was generating just to stay uh, where he was. And then you look over to after the, the post test and he is so much more relaxed. He's not generating nearly as much force, so much more efficient, all, all things considered. Absolutely. And when we really looked at it, I'm like his head comes almost dead to center, like it was pretty good. But the best part is when we looked at the two, when we looked at the pre-test eyes open and the post-test eyes closed, <laughs> in the end, he left with better balance with his eyes closed than he showed up with his eyes open. Phenomenal. Yeah, you know, but um, while I'm still screen sharing, though, I got to show the comparison video, though, to some of my 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 amazing girls. OK, and, and please also, while you're at it, you know, a couple of weeks ago when we were chatting, we did a little of this and, and you showed me one woman, if it's OK with with her and yourself, who you had at a very basic level. Similar mm -hmm. to what you just, if you don't mind showing after, after some of your amazing athletes, that would Absolutely. be great too. Absolutely. So like my amazing athlete. Okay. So we kick her up. Look at how fast she's going to start spinning on this thing. Oh so yeah. She's got fast. her arms in the figure skater mode. Oh my right. God. Right. And, and we got a midline cross and she is spinning like uh, Fiona in Shrek. You know, I mean, like, <laughs> like that brain is just shooting around and, you know, it's so, so, so fast. And she that's what, like five, speed. six revolutions in a second? Yep. She's at five and a half turns per second. <laughs> and and it's not, and she's not affected by it. So here she talks about it. Here she comes. Coming down. And then, of course, the most amazing part to the whole story. Okay. How dizzy are you? Um, I'm not dizzy. Not that dizzy. Not dizzy at all. I'm not Thanks. Dizzy. Have a great day from the <laughs> I'm not dizzy, you know, like it's, it's amazing, you know, that like, so good, like you good. could do that. But, but then I talk about my reality videos. Okay. So once again, this is my reality video of um, a, a woman who falls all the time, had so, so many falls to the point she was really kind of becoming a shut in. She wasn't going anywhere. And you can see um, the gear can go up to 350 pounds, which is, you know, important and all societies. And with all athletes, I can work with linemen and football players. I really want to work with Shaquille O'Neal. So like I, my gear can take it. Okay. But you can <laughs> see this woman does just one turn, but once again, she's doing the work. It's standing balance, horizontal, vertical, yaw. You can, she, she can move her head and this is it. She makes one turn. Um, she works with me, you know, occasionally, um, especially after that six week mark. And to the point that she um, she hasn't had any falls since, you know. So, and 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 I always use my mom as the example too. My mom works with me once a week, seventy six years old, just does about seven eight turns both directions. We're done in like four minutes. And my mom just did one of those Viking riverboat cruises, you know. Mm -hmm. so she flew all the way to Europe. Did was the riverboat the the cobblestones the bus the you know the international flight the really unlevelness of europe by the way that's an unlevel 
location in the world. Okay, it's really unlevel. And then from there, flew home and had zero falls, zero problems, did great. And, you know, and prior to working with me, she had fallen probably 10, 12, 14 times. You know, so prior to that, it, it was so bad, but a complete change. And she hasn't had any falls since, you know, so once a week, five minutes, boom, she's in, she's out and she's, she's busy. She's driving. Like her driving skills have improved. Wow. That is truly just a wonderful news. Now, <clears throat> here's something uh, I love geeking out on, on motor neurology, brain science, right? So we've, we've got this reflex within our body known as the VOR reflex, which is the vestibular ocular reflex, meaning that kind of like one of those baby dolls where you tilt the, the baby in different directions, but the eyes stay locked on the horizon, the eyelids will close and then open as you tilt it back and forth, so on. So the eyes and the vestibular system have this marriage together for the most part, so that when you tilt your head back, your eyes have to go down to stay looking straight ahead. And when you tilt your head forward, the eyes have to go up. And, and and so they move in opposite directions as long as we're staying kind of focused on a target. So I bring this up because I'm curious, do you utilize the vestibular training with your athletes? You've kind of already mentioned a little bit where they turn their head. Do you have specific head positions that you encourage? Do you have a certain progression or routine uh, during those five minutes or over the course of weeks and so on? How does that work? So in general, I have them just start with their head just straight and not spotting like, like they just go because like I, figure skating gets compared to ballet all the time but really they're, they're nothing alike <laughs> why, why, why do you say that they, they really don't turn the same like we don't spot we spin with our head in all different positions ah, you know yes. and really ballerinas don't that that head is very fixed and and snapping as, as they spot and and we really don't um and the interesting part is I can crank on people and I can create a nystagmus, like where their eyes like are twittering, you know? Yes, yeah. Sure, I can do that. And then then it'll stop because I've almost like reset the brain. So like I can really tell that I've stimulated the brain when I create a nystagmus within the within the person. And then, then it calms down and it's fascinating to see how it, it starts decreasing so quickly. So my husband was in a huge car accident um, several years ago. And when he first started on our training gear, it took him 17 seconds to get not dizzy. Like, like he stood there, like, like, like just a second, wait a minute, wait, 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 17 seconds on day one. On day two, he dropped down to like 14 seconds. I was like, wow, what an improvement. Day three, two, two seconds, <laughs> two wow. seconds. So, you know, so yeah, like I was, I was fascinated, you know, that, that it really, really improved. I'm going to move around at the same time here. <laughs> you go right ahead. Yeah. Cause I got old dog here at the same time. Like <laughs> old dog. Did you put the dog on there? Did yeah. yeah the the dog? Dog. There's, there's, there's the old dog here. Here we go. <laughs> She likes to bark a lot. She really loves Zoom meetings, you know, so, so perfect. So, so yeah, so like we laugh all the time about like it, people just get faster and faster and faster at resetting that vestibular system, you know, and, and it's trainable. You can train it. And that's, that, that's the part where, okay, can I screen share one more time? Yes, please. I, I, I love to, it. So one of my old students flies army helicopters. So we talk about, um, I talk about, she's a really hard kid to train. Like she, this is a strong willed kid. So ready, but now she flies army helicopters. She's found her people. And um, this is just an amazing video of her. If she's talking about aviation, um, I'm also thinking sports. I'm thinking driving, like this is more than aviation. Here we go. So being a figure skater, it completely changed my life with aviation. The training I received through years of skating made me basically immune to spatial disorientation. They've put me through every test, every Blarney chair, every spinny apparatus, the spatial disorientation pods, and I cannot get disoriented. I always know where my body is. I always have a sense of where the ground is, how to right myself, and also the mental clarity on how to stay calm. And that all came through skating. It all came through the years of spinning and coming out of a certain position, spinning and with my head in different ways. And 
it's literally going to save my life as an army aviator. And I feel like vestibular training could save the lives of all aviators because you can train spatial disorientation out of you. You can learn to not get spatially disorientated. It is a learned practice skill that is possible. So fantastic. Like, it's so fantastic. But of course, she sends along this video. I just, this is so great. Uh, we've had millions of hits on this video. It's, it's the boy in the Barney chair. Okay, so it's a spinning chair and it stops and this poor kid is not doing well, okay? And I always joke like, do you wanna fly with this kid? I don't want him to be my pilot. He's about to get kicked out of flight school, you know, as he should um, in the city and all that money wasted, okay? But now here's Megan, same girl. And to be honest, this is slow. You've seen my fast videos. This is nothing to her. This, she, you could crank this thing up five times that speed. And of course, Megan is perfect. There's no balance issues. There's no nystagmus. She's got perfect balance. She's not disoriented in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Versus once again, the boy who, oh, this kid's going to vomit and <laughs> kill us all as a pilot. You know what I mean? Like th this kid is not top gun material, you know, like where I talk about Megan, I want to fly with her. You would be very, very safe because she just doesn't get disoriented by any type of spinning motion. Um, or any up or down, like she she gets it. Like her brain understands what's happening to her and isn't affected by it. Yeah, I can see this easily carrying over into every sport, every athletic pursuit, but every daily activity as well. Now, one thing that you touched upon also is that how fun it can be for people. They're smiling, whether it was the individual that was uh, quasi paralyzed on his right side and how much fun he had. And, but so that that fun, that happiness creates dopamine in the brain. And there's one population that struggles to create, produce dopamine. And that, that's the Parkinson's population, people with Parkinson's disease. So have you worked with people living with Parkinson's? And if so, what does that, what's the outcome of those? So I'm just starting, okay? I'm just starting with people with Parkinson's. Um, I've, I've had a little bit more work with TBIs and amputees, uh, oddly, like that, that seems like a weird, and you know, no, there's, that, there's that running American joke, um, like, hi, I'm going to kidnap you. I've got a van and I've got a puppy and candy, like get in my van. Okay. It's a ridiculous, you know, thing. Do you I have mean, a van. Yeah, I so I, I yeah. Oh, you have Parkinson's? You have Alzheimer's? Hi, get oh. my come get like come get on my spinner and harness. Like I want to work with you. Like yeah, I, I really hit people up at Home Depot. I'm like, hi, you're an AT. <laughs> hi, I'm Sheila. Here's my business card. Come work with me. You know, like I'm I'm that person. You know, like um. But the the magic of this too is is even um. I've had requests for like even to work with PTSD. Um, guys and stuff, a lot, a lot of veterans. And the hard part is my main training center, um, I have children in the building. So like I, I haven't worked with a certain population because I really have kids in the building that I, I, I have to be realistic at the populations I work with um, because that's it's just basic safety. Uh, in the same sense, of course, we're teaming up and that's probably the best skill I have that I talk about is I'm a team upper. I love to team up, but we want to work with other PTs and OTs and doctors and nurses and, you know, that that work with Parkinson's and work with PTSD and that to get the gear in their hands, train them how to use it. And they could help thousands of people on that gear, you know, even weekly. Uh, half my sales go into people's homes, which is great. I helped a nice family of four or five or six and maybe their neighbors, but to get in with a PT or an OT that really can help hundreds of people even a day, it's such easy gear to run that my chief medical officer calls it plug and play, where you just start with this for the first five minutes of the session. And then you go on to the normal laundry list that you were going to do with that athlete or that individual anyway, whether it's an ACL or a back or a concussion, or they're there to lift weights. But once again, if I can speed up the athlete, I'm going to create a better athlete. You're going to have a better session and get more done when they have better balance and a faster processing. 
And it's a very simple device from the look of things. You've got uh, it connected to a beam on the ceiling. It comes down, there's a rod that separates two lines that attach to a shoulder harness. And then there's a belt that wraps around the midsection rib cage region for safety. So people are going to stay upright and yet it's on a swivel up by the ceiling. And then for the most part, you have them stand on this uh, jumbo lazy Susie that you would find on a restaurant table, but uh, they're able to stand on that and it's, it's motorized, correct? So you control the speed with which it, it rotates. Right, I can control the speed and the direction. So it can go both clockwise and counterclockwise. And, that's and a that, good thing. That's the whole interesting part too, because a lot of it depends on which ear you're dominant on, on which one you put on the axis. So it's a weird sports training trick of like, we always test like which eye is dominant, where you mm -hmm. hold up your hands, you look through it and like, which eye does it center on? You know, it's my right eye that I can see through when I, when I pick, pick an eye, but which ear is dominant. The, it's an interesting trick. How you do it is you just lean here, lean in. I got a secret in which ear would you lean in with? It'd be my right ear. So most people, it's a right ear, but my children with ADHD and autism and kids in reading studies, to be honest, a lot of those kids will lean in with their left ear. So we crank those. So do you ears. counter rotate? Yeah. So, so we just force them to go counterclockwise and get more of the balance into their right ear. And weirdly within the next year, year and a half, these kids aren't in reading programs anymore. Like, like it just resets and it reclicks. So I'm, I'm so the only just to clarify, if, if I'm more dominant in my left ear, my head will most likely rotate right. So therefore you're going to spin me to my left counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. The force that okay. balance more into that right ear. So yeah, so putting that right ear, it's, we want them to go. So if <laughs> we want them in their right ear balance, that there's just it just seems to work better for for most athletes mm -hmm. is that right ear balance. So we'd want to force that to go counterclockwise. Whereas my left ear kids, they're naturally good at going clockwise, but we'd want to flip that around. And somewhere along the way, do you eventually do both rotations, both directions, or do you yes. stay primarily with one? Yes, yes. You do. Eventually, once once they get that right ear clicking and really. Um, what's interesting is the kids don't like it. The kids want to only go counterclockwise. The adults don't mind moving back to clockwise and flipping it back and forth. The adults seem to handle that better, but the kids really only want to go one direction, which I find fascinating. And, and the interesting part too, children with um, even severe autism don't get dizzy. I, I can't explain this. You know, I really can't. These children, I can spin these kids. Uh, we have a system in the UK over in Manchester, England. And I, I had kids spinning a hundred turns and they got off and they were not dizzy. They wanted more. They'd hug mm -hmm. me, they'd thank me, you know. <laughs> I mean, these are profoundly autistic children that don't get dizzy at a hundred turns. You, you'd be throwing up. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. Okay, so this, Sheila, I've had a, a thoroughly enjoyable conversation here, and I can't believe we're near the end of, of our time, but let's let's take a moment and for for the interested parties out there that want to learn more, where can we go, web address, your your product and your company name, Instagram, social media, and the like. We got it all, of course. So the company's name is Vestibular Training Services. And we joke it's the worst name we could have named it because you have to know how to spell vestibular. So the website is actually, I have the world's worst marketing guy. Um, so we uh, we talk about, the, the website is spinyourbrain.com. So really easy, just spinyourbrain.com. Uh, I'm also really involved in LinkedIn. So that that's my favorite platform and I'm obsessed with LinkedIn. So um, Sheila Thielen on LinkedIn. And we also have a training page to the, the business page is Vestibular Training Services, LLC on LinkedIn. So uh, we're on Instagram under Vestibular Training Services. We're on Facebook, uh, but really everything we do is really mostly LinkedIn. So uh, that's where I've got to meet the most amazing people and that's wow. uh that's been that's been our our project yeah i'm so glad we connected via linkedin as well and and uh this has been uh, thoroughly enjoyable very intriguing i can't wait to continue to follow your pursuits and congratulations on the 
patent as well. And uh, I would love to have you back on another time where we can we can talk further about the different things and the, the different directions in which your products can be used for, from the general population to athletes, uh, professional Olympians or recreational for that matter. So thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, come train, let's, let's spin your brain. Well, that's a wrap for this episode of the Zealous Podcast. I hope you enjoyed what Sheila had to share. And if you were listening and you want to actually watch what she was doing with some of the screen sharing, then go to our YouTube channel, which is just my name, Rocky Snyder, comma, CSCS. Search for that on YouTube. And hey, you might as well click subscribe there. And we'll hopefully connect next week.